So this is a map of the area. We start here, we're at the town of Creswick. Um, we just come up the Creswick Clunes Road and we're at the new Australasian number two mine, which produced 2,484 kilograms of gold which is an astronomical amount. And you can see there by the geography that the gold field and gold bearing area extends well to the north. And in my other videos, you'll see how far to the south to Ballarat uh, and beyond it extended. But today, our interest is in the Australasian number two mine. So here is the memorial and it honors the 27 miners trapped underground in the flooded new Australasian mine on the 12th of December, 1882. Of the 27 trapped, 25 perished, five were rescued. And for three days, their colleagues pumped water at a rate of 50,000 gallons an hour, but it wasn't enough to halt the rising water. And most of those trapped deep underground were uh, eventually drowned. This is the only one of the mines around here that is open to the public. Uh, it's well signposted. There's a small parking area. A lot of the other mines are not capped, so they present a danger. You can easily fall in. So uh, this one's well worth a, worth a walk. It's about couple of kilometres off the main Clunes Creswick Highway and about 50 metres off the little side road there. We have the mullet heap there. And it says, site of Australia's most tragic underground mining accident. Without warning on the 12th of December 1882, water began flooding the number two drive trapping 20 miners, 29 miners deep below. As water rose higher, the miners scratched messages to their families on billy cans and sang the hymn in the sweet by and by. 22 miners died in the tragedy, leaving behind 17 widows and 67 children. The very deep bleed which the mines here tapped is part of an ancient system of rivers buried by lava from nearby volcanoes. During the nine years of operation, New Australasian yielded 87,000 ounces of gold, worth about $38 million in 1997 prices. Closing in 1887, land was then used by forests as a tree nursery, and remains of the hawthorn hedges can be seen. Um, so you've got the mullet keep here, which is there, and the shaft, which is just here, which we're going to have a look at shortly, and the remains of the quartz wash, which was mined from the uh, buried stream. And the majority of the quartz was removed by Vic Railways and used for ballast on their trains, on their railways. So there is the capped mine shaft. I'm not actually aware if they actually recovered the 27 deceased. I should have researched that before I started this video, should I not? I'll check it out and I'll leave it for you in a, in a comment, okay? And all here we have, this is my quartz that, uh, carried the gold which they crushed to retrieve that's a great example there recently broken one you can see the, the glimmer in there doesn't appear to be any gold in that one I'm sure there's still gold 
remains but clearly not get economic although there is a gold mine at uh, Ballarat that they are still working so they're in there's the mine shaft I'll keep we might go for a short walk You'll probably get a lot of wind noise up here. That's quite breezy. And I'm out of breath because I'm so fit. I think we have a controlled burn or a bushfire somewhere just to the north or the northwest. Not a lot of smoke. It's late March 2024, and as you can see, late summer, everything's very dry. The dams and watercourses are low. Coloured quartz. Well, that's it for this one. If you're on your way up to Clunes, as I say, just a couple of k's off the main highway on the left, and uh, it's places like this that I like that are easy to miss, and you don't realise the historical significance. Okay. And just here to the west of the mine shaft and mullet keep, under the shade of these very old gum trees, is this cairn unveiled by the Honourable John Kane, who was the Premier of Victoria in, in December. 1982 which is the anniversary of the disaster the tragedy it says this cairn marks the site of the new australasian gold mining company's number two shaft the workings of which were flooded on the 12th of december 1982 entombing 27 miners 22 of whom lost their lives despite heroic efforts made to save them and there we have a butterfly the names of the dead miners are inscribed on an obelisk erected at Creswick Cemetery and also an obelisk, a uh, little um, memorial stone just over there by the car park. And so this was unveiled on the 100 year anniversary of the disaster. Now here's a little aside, um, which I wasn't expecting. And this is the grave and gravestone ded dedicated to the memory of Patrick Bowen, who died in 1876, age 62. 
Now, Patrick Bowen, coincidentally, was one of the five miners who was rescued alive from the Australasian number two. And you can't really see that. And I don't particularly, obviously, want to walk on the grave, but it says, Australasian number two mine disaster. Patrick Bowen, 54 years old, buried 26th of March, 1909, unmarried. Patrick Bowen was one of the five survivors from the Australasian number two mine disaster. Tragically, he fell into an unused mine shaft 15 feet deep near the Portuguese dredge and died of his injuries a week later. Buried with his parents, Patrick and Esther, and siblings, Esther, William, Catherine, and Mary. And there is a photo there of him. But you can't really... And here in the Creswick Cemetery in the Central Avenue, excuse the uh, obvious roadworks, we have the memorial to the mine disaster, erected by the public in memory of the 22 miners who perished in the Australian mining disaster, 12th of December 19, 1892, and unveiled in 1908 and we have a that says on the morning of December 12th 1882 at 5.30am water broke through the old workings and trapped 27 men underground at 8.25 AM on the 15th of December, the first of the five survivors was brought to the surface. By half past 12, the last of the deceased was brought up. Just after 2 p.m. on the same day, a procession formed at the mine site to move the deceased to the cemetery. All but Mr. John Gow were buried at the Creswick Cemetery in their respective denominations. Mr. Gow being buried at the Ballarat New Cemetery the same day. Over 4,000 people in the funeral procession with 15,000 bystanders. With the whole town of Creswick attend the funeral, including special trains from Clunes and Ballarat for the miners who wished to attend. The procession included clergymen from Presbyterian, Catholic, Church of England, Primitive, Methodist, Wesleyan, and Bible Christian churches, firing party, volunteer brass bands, volunteer riflemen. Prince of Wales Light Horse, Loyal Peace and Plenty Lodge, uh, Mutual Organisation of Oddfellows, Loyal Spring Lodge, Oddfellows, Australian Natives Association, 2000 Men of the Miners Association, followed by the general public in about 100 vehicles and on horseback. The funeral cortege was over a mile long from the mine to the front gates of the cemetery. And the directors of the mine bore the expense of the funerals. Okay, and sadly, there is a photo of the miners laid out.